in the right place. You are in the right place if you are here for the um, green, uh, clean tech open Northeast to kick off with Canada. So um, if that's not where you meant to be, um, you can um, politely um, stay if you, if you wish, if that sounds interesting. Otherwise, um, yeah. So, oh, and Karen's here too. Great. Hi, Karen. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm Beth Zonis. I run the Clean Tech Open in the Northeast. What we're going to do is I'll run through a few slides and I'll keep interrupting myself to introduce various, uh, various speakers. And then we'll have a little bit of time at the end for anyone who's thinking of applying to Clean Tech Open this year. There's my dog. Anyone who's thinking of applying to Clean Tech Open this year um, will give you a chance to um, say hello, introduce yourself, and uh, tell us a little bit about what you're working on. This is not a pitch. This is just a quick introduction, no pressure. And um, I guess that's it. So um, without further ado, I will put up my slides here and we can get started. So we will record this session as you all noticed. So if you have any questions about that, do not hesitate to ask. Feel free to put comments in the chat and my team members will reply as, um, as they can. So welcome. Uh, Clean Tech Open um, is a national accelerator. We are based, um, well, we are national. I cover the Northeast region and I'm based just out of the Boston area. And as I said, it's national, but I cover the Northeast region and we'll explain. The Northeast region covers from Eastern Canada, South through Pennsylvania. So we cover nine states from Maine through Pennsylvania. Um, and the rest of the country is of course um, also part of the program. And we have many, many people who participate from all around the world as well. So here goes. Um, I believe that my next slide here is about my team. Um, whoops, sorry, I went ahead of myself a little bit. So I'm the regional director, um, senior director of um, Clean Tech Open Northeast. I wanna introduce my colleagues. So Skelly Holmbeck is our interim program manager. Skelly, do you wanna wave and say hi? <laughs> and um, Safia, Safia Elmi is our spring coordinator and she can also say hi. Do you wanna say hi, Skelly? I mean, uh, Safia. Hi, I'm currently Clean Tech Open Northeast Spring Program Coordinator. I'm on call from Northeastern University. It's nice to see all of you. Thank you, Sophia. And um, so if you have any questions, feel free to address myself, Skelly, or Sophia. Um, and um, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about who we are here in the Northeast. We're run by an organization called, the, called NECEC, which stands for the Northeast Clean Energy Council. And um, just as a little introduction, NECEC is, is focused on policy and regulatory work for uh, the clean energy economy. And so what I like to say is that NECEC is laying the green carpet for startups and others in this sector in this region. So you're in good hands. This is a great place to be with an, a huge amount of support and lots of people who want to see clean tech innovation really take off and succeed. So without further ado, I do wanna introduce our first speaker, which is Molly, who's Molly Rafelson, is a senior trade officer at the Canadian Consulate in New York. And we are really happy to work with Molly um, at, the, uh, at the Canadian Consulate to help us to make things easier and smoother for clean, clean tech startups from Canada, and also to just make it possible for, um, for startups from other places to do business in Canada as well. So I will turn it over to you, Molly, and I will stop sharing. Thank you, Beth. Really appreciate it. Hello, everyone. It's great to have you all here. Really excited for today's session. Again, my name is Molly Ravelson. I'm the head of energy and environment at the consulate in New York City. Um, we really work with export-ready Canadian 
clean tech and climate tech startups to help them connect with relevant investors, customers, and potential partners like clean tech open in new markets. So thank you, Beth. Thank you, Skelly and Safia and the rest of the clean tech open team for having us. We are so proud to partner with the clean tech open for another year. We've seen just incredible value that they've delivered to Canadian clients time and time again. We've had lots of Canadian companies participate in the program and they have shared rave reviews, uh, many of which have really become finalists within the regions and also have participated in the CTO Globe Forum. Um, we're so grateful to have some of our Canadian alumni companies like Inersion, Feedback Solutions, Inovia Geo on the line today, but we also have other advocates like QD Solar, Swirltech, Summit Nanotech, um, who have gone through the program and uh, have had a really wonderful experience as well. One of the unique assets of the program is Cleantech Open's incredible pool of industry leading mentors. They are experts at coaching companies and really being a sounding board as they go through the program. And, and I think there's a lot of structure and meaningful deliverables that you're able to collaborate on together, um, which is fantastic. I will also note that we run some accelerator programs at the consulate for Canadian companies. And we recently collaborated with the Clean Tech Open mentors in their off season, thank you to all these amazing volunteers to provide mentorship to 10 um, women-led clean tech startups. So uh, we're just so grateful for their support and we've gotten really great feedback from um, the founders as well. I'd love to also take a moment to let you know that our flagship accelerator, the Canadian Technology Accelerator in Climate Tech is also recruiting until April 30th. And just to differentiate between the programs, this is primarily focused on seed to series A climate tech startups that are actively raising now through the next 12 months. And we really look to, to act as a conduit for Canadian startups to enter four of the most most robust markets for clean tech and climate tech in the US, and that's Boston, New York, Denver, and San Francisco. And we work with some really amazing partners like NYSERDA, NREL, Powerhouse, and Greentown Labs, and some others on those programs. But what I really want to note is that we have found great success in having founders who have completed the clean tech open participate in our program um, moving forward as, as kind of a feeder. So it's a great place to really get your feet wet in the market for the first time. Um, and just wanted to share that that could be in the future for you as you graduate out. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on that program at a later date because we're going to focus on Clean Tech Open today. But with that, thanks so much again, Beth. I'll hand it back over to your team because we have a really fun-filled agenda. Thank you very much, Molly. And I should mention that quite a few of our startups have gone on to participate in the uh, Canadian Clean Tech Accelerator. And uh, it's uh, that's one good step um, for many, many people following uh, following Clean Tech Open. So let's go back to my slides. And I think I have um, probably some more people to introduce. So give me one moment. Um, we'll just, I think we had a little bit of a challenge here with my slides. Okay, this is the next slide. All right, I was surprised. Um, give me one second, please. Okay, that is my next slide. I was mistaken. But anyway, my next slide says, if you are thinking about pitching, um, we are happy to have you pitch, but it is, um, I don't want to make, make you feel uncomfortable. It is not necessarily a pitch. It is really geared toward introducing yourself and sharing a little bit about what you are working on. So this is not meant to be a, um, um, you know, a, a competition in any way. Um, and what I like to tell people is if you are terrible at pitching, that is actually totally fine for Clean Tech Open. We are very happy to, uh, to help you with that. Not just how you tell your story, but all of the other things that go behind it. Um, so if you, are, if you would like to introduce yourself and what you're working on, please share that in the chat with, um, with Skelly and um, that's Skelly Holmbeck. So, um, next up, I do want to mention, we are really lucky to have an incredible group of sponsors for Clean Tech Open, especially here in the Northeast. It's a really vibrant ecosystem here. And since we are a nonprofit, most of our funding does come from our sponsors. So you'll see at the top, Mass CEC, the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, and NYSERDA, um, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority are our largest sponsors. They are in charge of transitioning their respective states to the 
to the, um, the clean economy. So this makes sense because obviously, um, obviously clean tech innovation is a key part of that. Um, the Sire Foundation is sponsoring a couple of um, specialty prizes this year and I'll mention those now. So one is the, um, one is a prize for um, agri agriculture, food and land use. And the other one is on carbon sequestration. We also have Canada. So thank you very much to the Canadian Consulate in New York for sponsoring us. And um, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority similarly is interested in building the clean tech economy in their state. Foley Hoag and Sunstein are attorneys. So Foley is a general law firm. Sunstein is an IP law firm. Schneider Electric is a company that specializes in energy tech. Um, AGC is a Sahi Glass company. Citi is in fact the bank, um, Citibank. Chubb Insurance. So we will learn about how to incorporate insurance and how to work with insurance companies. Um, Constellation is a, an energy tech company. Novartis is pharmaceuticals and Xylem is water tech. So I'm gonna skip over to the right and let you know that our in-kind sponsors are various organizations that provide services and products directly to our startups. And the total value there is over 300,000 US dollars. So this is significant. There's a lot here. All of our sponsors offer something to our startups to make their lives easier as they go along their entrepreneurship journeys. So what do we consider as a clean tech, um, potential clean tech startup to come into clean tech open? I would say anything that has an environmental benefit is a potential, uh, potential solution for us. It can be a product, it can be a service, it can be a mix, it can be a, a, um, a business model, it could be a mix of multiple things on, these, on this page. So your solution benefits the environment or could potentially benefit the environment, we are willing to talk to you. So wide variety of options here. And you'll hear from a few of our, um, of our alumni to get a better idea of that as well. So what do we do? I like to tell people it's like a mini MBA. Um, we provide training in the form of a national academy, which is gonna span a few days this year. Um, we have lots of webinars, lots of business clinics with extra coaching. And as Molly said, we believe that the mentorship is a huge part of this. Um, every team in the Northeast is matched with multiple mentors as many as four potentially. So if you start our program with a team of two, um, you are suddenly three times larger. It's a big, um, a big significant change. And um, those people are there to advise you. They work with you like an advisory board and can also help you make connections as you build your relationship with them. Access to capital refers to connections that we're able to make for you with various types of investors, including potential customers. And then at the end, you'll see that there are also opportunities to pitch for cash prizes and get lots of attention um, and let people know what you're working on and see who might be interested in working with you in a wide variety of ways. So what's our schedule? April 17th is the most important date to remember for right now. That's our application deadline. And if you are thinking of applying, look at the application right now. It does require some thought. Um, this is not something that you can fill out in a day. It does require some thinking back and forth with your, with your partners and colleagues and advisors to make sure that you are answering the questions to the best of your ability. Um, so through into May, we will select the cohort and introduce mentors. And then at the beginning of June, we have our National Academy, which spans three days. And then June through September is the core programming. So June through September, well, I should say June through August is when the deliverables are due. And then we get into um, the regional finals and some other webinars and such into um, the end of September. And then in October, we have our global forum, which is where our startups will have a chance to meet everybody from across the entire program.
So I will also tell you that um, from May through September 27th is private. So that is essentially the time when we have an opportunity for our startups to work in a safe space and really think through the, the, the various things that they need to work on and, um, and really get a chance to, um, sorry about that, really get a chance to, um, to stress test their businesses. So again, from May through September 27th, private, um, everything from April through uh, the business clinics is virtual. So we will go in person at the regional finals. We will be in Boston and at the global forum, we will be in San Jose, California. So we really look forward to seeing everybody at the end. I think that will be a great culmination of the program. And I will mention um, GHG emissions reduction potential was new in 2021. This is a big deal. This is how are you going to measure and calculate how much you will make a difference in your, um, your emissions reduction? How much of a difference will you make in the environment with your solution? So we have some predictions from our from our past cohort on that. So what do, what do you work on? So the deliverables that you create are really the basis of how you will run your business um, after Clean Tech Open. We start with customer discovery. You will, you will create a business model canvas. And as you go through that, the exercises that, that we run, you will continue to update your business model canvas, which is essentially a short form of a, um, of a business model. You will fill in all of these different things. And then toward the end, you will have um, all of the pieces to make up a, a really strong executive summary, an intro video and a pitch deck. So we cover a lot of things that are not explicitly called out in these deliverables, but um, you will also work with folks on how to talk with attorneys, how to work with insurance, how to build partnerships, how to build your team, and, uh, and many other things. So um, it's a really rigorous program and uh, we keep you busy throughout, um, throughout the five and a half or so months that we are working together. So how are we doing? A couple of years ago, we did some um, we did some research on our alumni, and we had at the time 414 clean tech open uh, alumni companies, um, and that was that is now 523, by the way. And we also learned that 68% of them were still in business. They were um, making 279 million dollars. We actually think it's that's low, but 279 million in US dollars in terms of revenue per year and 653 million in terms of funds raised. You'll see behind here, um, Eastern, the Eastern Canada and Maine, Maine through Pennsylvania is our, um, our region. They were at the time again, employing over 3,300 people and the diversity um, that we have right now is averaging about the last couple of co cohorts is averaging about 62% of our startups having either a woman founder or a minority founder. So um, these numbers are really quite impressive, especially if you think about early stage startups in general, which are in the 25% uh, the survival rate. So being at 68% is pretty, is um, quite commendable. So I'm going to skip to the next slide and uh, show you what our startups told us last year. So 44 startups in the 2021 cohort from the Northeast calculated that their collective projected reduction was 101 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent per year when they're at scale. That is also quite significant. That's equivalent to taking 22 million cars off the road. So if all of those 44 plus all of the others that have graduated over the years are, um, are given a chance to get to market and get traction. Um, the, the amount of, of um, impact that we all can have through innovation and entrepreneurship is, is um, really significant. And so 
That's why we do this work. It, it makes a difference. So what's happening in 22 is similar to what we did in 2021. We have, a, we have some focus areas on diversity, equity, and inclusion. We will um, encourage you to build diversity, equity, and inclusion into your startup culture from the beginning. We talked about greenhouse gas emissions reduction potential. We have a whole set of materials to help you with those calculations. And we have some great prizes. So in the Northeast, $60,000 worth of cash prizes, which includes six, um, six prizes overall. Four of those are general prizes. And then two are specialty prizes, which I mentioned earlier, plus over $300,000 worth of goods and services. So if you have an ag food and land use and or a carbon sequestration solution, um, you have an extra opportunity everybody has an opportunity to win a prize. And so what does it cost to participate? So you get a lot for what you, what you pay here. It's $75 to apply per team and it's $1,350 to participate. Again, that's a per team rate. Um, teams from certain places um, can be eligible for um, either partial or complete reimbursement. We do not take equity in your startup. So there are a lot of opportunities for um, how you use this, this funding and some of our, some of our alumni will, will speak to that. So what do we look for in your application? Market, solution, and team. Do you have a market for what you are what you're providing? Have you identified that yet? If you haven't, that's okay. Um, but we do wanna know what you have in mind at least. And is your solution something that could actually work? Could it satisfy this market need that you're identifying? Does it have an advantage over some current alternatives? And what does your team look like? Does your team look like you could um, do what you say you are going to do? Um, are you coachable? Do we think that you could benefit from our program? And, and now I'm going to go quiet um, for a little bit after I do a quick introduction here for three speakers. So our first three speakers are Andrew, David, and Hanif. So Andrew is with, um, he's a co-founder and president of Innovia Geo and um, really proud of Andrew. Last year, he was a Clean Tech Open Northeast um, winner. So with his company, he'll tell you a little bit about what he's working on. David Wally um, is uh, the CEO of Feedback Solutions. And in 2019, um, he was a um, Clean Tech Open Northeast finalist with his company. And Hanif Montazeri is the CEO of Inersion. And uh, Inersion was also a 2019 Clean Tech Open Northeast finalist. So I am going to stop sharing. I will turn it over to these folks in order to just tell you a little bit about, tell us a little bit about your company, what you're working on, how Clean Tech Open went for you, and um, what advice you might have for the next cohort. So Andrew, you're on. Great. Well, thank you very much, Beth, and uh, appreciate appreciate uh, everyone here taking their time to uh, to learn about clean tech open uh, which uh, I think uh, you know from the three of us panelists uh, probably share a similar view that it's a fantastic program uh, so I'm Andrew Lee uh, president of Anovia Geo uh, and we're focused on decarbonizing heating and cooling uh, and we're doing that by developing uh, innovative technologies uh, to reduce the cost time and mess of installing uh, clean and efficient geothermal heating and cooling systems for buildings um, so as Beth mentioned, uh, we were our participant in last year's the 2021 uh, Clean Tech Open uh, program, uh, and you know at the stage, and I think what really helped us uh, was really that that mentorship uh, network, uh, and we were assigned four mentors from a very wide range of industries, uh, and I think uh, from from my perspective, what what really helped and the way I I treated that group was almost as a, a quasi board of directors. And, and really uh, enjoy uh, the, the discussions we had and, and oftentimes debates uh, that we had throughout the program that, that really you know, caused us to rethink our, our plans. And uh, you know, through that program, we 
decided uh, and sort of advice we decided to pivot a little bit uh, and accelerate the development of, of one technology where we were kind of on the fence of, of whether to do that or not um, because of you know limited funds and, and resources available but you know ultimately uh, we think that helped us make the right decision and, and are on a, a good path now um, so happy to uh, to answer questions that that any in this group might have uh, and i'll also uh, flip my email to the the chat as well so uh, if anyone's interested in connecting offline i'm happy to do that as well thank you andrew is there anything any advice that you have for um, the next cohort uh sure you know i think um you know this advice probably you'll hear it a couple of times was you know clean tech open it really is what you make of it and so um you know through the application process through the program as well um you know these resources these tremendous resources uh, are available to you um and it, it's really you know at, at your kind of discretion almost how you utilize those resources um but uh you know i think um you know taking the time up front uh, to really kind of you know plan out what you want to accomplish and, and do and try to to you know highlight those as, as specific goals uh, can help you know align everyone that that's there to, to help you um, I, think, I think that's uh, sort of the advice that I give is, is really you know focus on on what you want to achieve and it's a very rigorous and intensive program I, I definitely can confirm that um, and so get ready to to work hard towards you know achieving those objectives Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And um, I think David is up next. So we're going to, um, let's see, I can make you a co-host, David, in case you, you wish to share any slides with us. Yes, so, I'm going to do that. David, welcome to the stage. Thanks very much. Give me one second to grab this. Yeah, I could certainly second what Andrew said, are you guys seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay, good. I can certainly second what, what Andrew said in terms of the, the, the program, uh, the mentorship, the, the, um, the, the messaging discipline, which is very, very key. I and mean, that's, that's one of the, one of the, the, the biggest things you're gonna get from your mentors, um, very, very important. And I think the reason why I wanted to put a couple of slides up, I just wanted to reinforce the, the notion that um, for Canadian companies, you can't, we, we, for Feedback Solutions, we couldn't be where we are today without the Clean Tech Open and, and to, to Molly's point, this, the CTA, the combination thereof. So similar to Andrew's company, we're in the building decarbonization space. So reducing greenhouse gas emissions while ensuring uh, uh, good, healthy, clean environments for the workplace. So, so where we play the verticals you would expect, office buildings, higher education, retail, uh, um, one of the neat things about the in-market events is we were able to develop a relationship. This goes back to 2019, uh, right before COVID, we were able to get established with, with NYU. So that was 2019. So fast forward with the benefit of, of uh, the consulate in New York, we were walked into a relationship with, uh, with NYSERDA. So a competitive process we went through took over a year, but here we are today receiving money from NYSERDA for a project with NYU as a host site. Um, and also too, with uh, with NREL in Denver, winning research time again, through, through connections of CTO and CTA. Um, and then fast forward to today, we're now working with the city of New York. Again, another connection we made through, through the CTO CTA network. And that was last week at the Schomburg Center in Harlem. And Hanif, you're gonna get a laugh out of this. This is the fun part, right? We're on the roof. And this is for us, this is this is exciting because this is a project we're doing with the city of New York and the Brooklyn Public or rather New York Public Library at the Schomburg Center. This is one of thousands of sites that the New York City DCAS is responsible for. So my message to you is that all of this we could not have accomplished without um, best team and and uh, leveraging the networks of the consulates. Uh, we're still dealing with with the with Maricela and Patrick um, with the Los Angeles uh, Trade Commission. They've tied us into the USGBCLA. We're in we're in participating in an event in Los Angeles in June, and that's still um, an outcome from the original work we did in, in 2019. 
So my message is, you can't replicate this network, you can't replicate the strength and the discipline you get from, from this type of program. Great. Thank you very much, Dave. It, um, it's great to have you tell, um, tell your story and about what you've been up to lately. Um, I think we're going to uh, skip ahead a little bit because Hanif is um, not here yet. Um, so what we will do is um, bring him in when he is ready. <laughs> and um, so as soon as he joins, we can uh, interrupt uh, um, our programming and, and bring on Hanif. And meanwhile, I wanna welcome um, Rob Parker. So Rob Parker is one of our favorite people in New York. He has been our deputy clean tech, our clean tech open deputy New York Metro director for a few years. He also runs a, um, uh, an investment firm called SIF Capital Advisors. He teaches entrepreneurship, um, clean tech entrepreneurship at, um, at NYU. And he also, um, he also is a consultant in this space and he has, um, he has worked in the, uh, in the Canadian consulate um, as, a, um, as a, a colleague of Molly's. So he wears many hats and um, I wanna turn it over to Rob to tell us a little bit about you know, your advice, what you're up to these days and uh, take it away. Thanks, Beth. Um, great to see a uh, presentation from Andrew and David. And uh, like Beth said, I've worked in the space for a long time, which is why I wear so many hats. Um, but one of the things that I've been more luckily, lucky to do more recently is working with a number of Canadian companies through the consulate, uh, Molly and the colleagues there. And I think um, when this partnership started to develop a few years ago with Clean Tech Open, um, it was a bit of a new initiative for both sides. And I, I think everyone would agree that it's been uh, really beneficial for both organizations or for Canadian companies. And I think for the Clean Tech Open as well, uh, as you can see from some of the from the beginning, a number of your, your firms have been, uh, or Canadian companies have done well in the program. And I think um, it's a testament to the multi-layered support network that you can see from things like the consulate, as well as then adding the, <clears throat> the mentor network. Um, as Beth mentioned, I've uh, my first ties to the Clean Tech Open are as a mentor and I guess chief deputy minion for Tim Hoffman, the New York Metro director, who also, uh, you know, I called Tim, uh, there he is, uh, the godfather of clean tech uh, here in New York. And uh, I think one of the best things that it can do, especially in a virtual environment that <clears throat> we're all still kind of muddling our way through is, is the networks of the clean tech open. It's not just a access to the mentors and the pools that you work with. And I think we used to say roughly just the value of the time and services that you get alone you could put a price on it because I know what we charge per hour. It was, you know, tens, tens of thousands of dollars in, in, in kind services. And the, uh, but not just that, especially in a virtual environment, the clean tech open is a big validator for the investment community for potential partners. Um, you, know, you saw some of the projects that, that feedback solutions is working on that Dave mentioned. Um, not just the ability to meet those those companies because you could do that maybe through the um, through the consulate network or through some other personal connections, but the the network of validation that uh, relationship with the clean tech open can provide, I think, really is incalculable. And then uh, the connection between the alumni networks across the country and other resources that are there uh, is really very difficult to replicate, uh, even with other accelerators or incubator programs that are out there. So. I think in a in a virtual world still, or the hybrid world, that's probably the next year or so. Uh, it really is kind of it. Uh, you get more of the uh, the tremendous uh, as an investor ROI would be what the VCs look for ten x, and I'd say you exceed that in spades uh, for what you would <clears throat> spend on the clean tech open. Um, and uh, you know, I think I'll turn it back over to Beth for just saying there's lots of ways to get, be involved and stay involved, and in that one of the great things about the clean tech open even more than some other uh, aspects is, and I think this speaks to it just having alumni here, is that it builds an ecosystem. You know, Tim and I have talked about that a lot in New York. I know Beth uh, consciously builds that. And it's one of the reasons the Northeast region is such a strong region for the Clean Tech Open, which is a, a national program. But I think it's very much, um, you, if you work in 
in in healthcare or fintech, you don't get people of this caliber volunteering their time to be your mentors. Uh, it's a, I think it's the nature of the industry that's still that's got a lot more money flowing to it, but still a lot smaller, and it's it's tackling some big challenges that people, um, even if they you know, they'll volunteer their time in ways that they might not because they want to make a difference. They want to help your technologies and your company succeed. And uh, it's it's a great organization. And I think you'll get a tremendous amount out of the program, not just this year, but in the years to come. And with that, I will turn it back over to our fearless leader, Beth. Thank you very much, Rob. And uh, I couldn't agree more with what you said about validation. So one of the things that we're able to do is to say, if you've gone through Clean Tech Open, everybody knows, so I say everybody, people in our industry know what that means. And that means that you've achieved a certain level of competence in terms of your, um, your entrepreneurship skills and your ability to run your business. And the industry folks know that. And when I say industry folks, I'm referring to people who could be your customers as well as your as well as investors in your in your um, entity. So keeping and that in mind, it's still a very small world uh, in the is, in the community. <laughs> it is, and we do have an incredible group of um, of friends in our in our community um, who give of their time and expertise and um, with pleasure. It's um, and to give you a little bit of background, I was a mentor for 10 years, nine years, excuse me, before I became the director and um, just really wanted to be part of this organization. It's a great group. So I'm going to just put up one slide to say, as a reminder, um, if you are a, if you are considering applying to the 2022 Clean Tech Open, we'd love to have you um, introduce yourself. We call it a pitch, not really a pitch. It's really introduce yourself and your startup. Um, we just want to know who you are and what you're working on. And um, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to Skelly, who should be collecting names of folks who want to introduce themselves. It looks so, like Skelly? we have, yeah, thanks so much. It looks like we've got four folks who want to pitch. Um, and to start with, we have Moshen Zeta Bashane. And I apologize about the pronunciation. Yeah, hi, not a problem. It's actually most in the tap chin. That's really well. Is it, okay, awesome. So, uh, yeah. On. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, I've actually never done like a pitch before, but um, I guess to give you guys a little bit of a background of what we do, I'm the co founder and CFO of Amatech. And essentially, what we created is a material that can be a direct competitor to concrete. And a little bit of info about it, it's, uh, it's called high density gypsum. And for the first time we were able to create, we were able to significantly increase the density of gypsum to the point where it could be strong enough to be a structural material. And the reason why that's really significant for us is because it is incredibly eco-friendly. It can be recycled indefinitely, potentially. It has a low carbon footprint. And it's just superior in every level to concrete. It's more efficient. It's the structures built out of this material are cheaper. And yeah, so that's a little bit about my company. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Yep. Next up, we have Raj Krishnamurti. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, it's a great forum. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to describe. I literally took the one minute very very seriously, and I'm going to keep it very brief. Uh, renewable energy, as you all know, is key to decarbonization and also for community energy resilience. Yet, uh, all around the world, communities are stalling out at 10 to 15 percent of solar contribution. Huga Energy reimagines the renewable energy business model to break the ceiling. Huga's community energy trading platform, we've created a software and hardware platform, harmonizes all of the distributed energy resources in a locality whether it's in front of or behind the meter, and instantaneously trades renewable energy locally. And it also creates an auditable renewable energy trail, which maximizes the carbon credits using a patented ability to direct the use of local renewable energy to specific carbon displacing uses like heating or EV charging, et cetera. This eliminates the need for unsustainable programs like net metering, which are getting phased out uh, everywhere. Uh, and these are 
inequitable to non-solar customers and the utility alike. And, but it also restores the utilities asset monetization and reveals a clear business case for them to own local store energy storage. Today, they do this only because of subsidies or under, under pressure. Perhaps most valuably, it gives the community policymakers the influence and the tools to actually direct local renewable energy towards decarbonization. Uh, so our system is differentiated in several aspects from, uh, from existing competitors uh, that prevent most of them from providing these benefits. Uh, we have several pilots and would love to share uh, our experience, our revenue models, our commercial success uh, with you given an opportunity. Thank you. Excellent, Raj. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Kelly Hall. Oh, Kelly, you're on mute. Still mute. still mute. There we go. Different technologies. Yeah, I think, it's, <laughs> I think I have five different visual things that we use. So, so right. So Vermilion Power Technologies. What we're doing is, you know, imagine that we've got a world that has uh, renewable energy for everyone, and that's actually something that's hugely important to us. So we've developed a system that is simple, affordable and scalable, it's expandable. So it's something that basically anybody can use. Um, we have a patent pending technology that's actually been proven out, that piece of it. And that technology actually lets us be 75% uh, cheaper. So we get a 75% cost advantage uh, with our product over others. But it's also makes it quite flexible. And so we're kind of future proof with that as well in terms of that product. So the system is, um, something that you can start with for emergency backup, but then expand it to any size you want all the way up to your entire house and up to the communities. Um, we have a partnership that we're developing with a, a US utility who is going to pilot our system with their customers. And we have a pretty good plan in terms of market access because we don't have to go through uh, installers. They're not required. Right now we are actually in a raise, so I don't know if I'm in the right place or not, but it seems like it's a good place for us to, to join. Uh, but we are looking at, um, we're working through for $2 million of non-dilutive funding right now and looking for another uh, $4 million with partnerships with, uh, with investors. Congratulations, Kelly, that's fantastic. And Beth, before we go to the next speaker, I'm gonna let you address a question about uh, companies being in the midst of a raise. Oh, yeah, that's a great question. So yeah, typically we work with startups that are pre-customer and pre-revenue, but there are some caveats to that. So mm. an exception might be if you have established your business in another place or in another market and you want to start again with customer discovery um, in a new place, or if you want to leverage something else that Clean Tech Open provides. Um, but essentially, we are helping startups with the um, the entrepreneurship skills. So if you feel like you can develop your entrepreneurship skills, your business model, your business plan further, then we are a good place to, to be. So I, I, I mean, entrepreneurship skills are always something that I can improve on for sure. Um, the difficulty I have, and, and I'm not sure if this applies, how this works out, we're a, a hard tech company. So we don't have sales yet. We are still a year, year and a mm -hmm. half away from even getting it out on the trial market. So we have to do the raises now so that we can survive to that point mm -hmm. as well. So that's that's where I'm at. I don't want to take any more of the time. With okay, the, the we hope you'll group. apply. Yeah, we please hope you'll do. apply and we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, please all right, do, thank Kelly. you very much. <laughs> thank you. All right, next up we have Nicholas Lavalley and then on deck we have Ali. If I have not said your name and you'd like to pitch, please do drop me a line in the chat. So Nicholas, the floor is yours. Thank you, Skelly. It's wonderful to be here. My name is Nicholas Laval. I'm uh, here on behalf of Clean Valley CIC. I'll try and stick to that minute. By 2050, there will be 10 billion people on this planet looking for a sustainable source of protein. And the onshore aquaculture market is poised to meet this demand. For every kilogram of protein they produce, they require only 1.84 kilograms of feed which is far more sustainable than any other protein producing industry on the planet. However, they are facing a massive op optimization problem with their water quality treatment. To treat the wastewater for their systems, there are three alternatives. 
dumping it into a local ecosystem, trucking it away to be treated or treating it on site. And of all three of these, only treating it on site allows them to scale to meet the upcoming demand. It is a rather costly process though, about $400,000 for the average biofiltration system to be installed with a million dollars every 10 years to replenish the filtering media, which by the way, are plastic beads. These plastic beads are considered deleterious. They will not break down, they will not decompose. It does not need to be this unsustainable and this uneconomical. And at Clean Valley CIC, we're bringing to market an alternative, a nature-based biofilter that utilizes algae and bivalves to treat wastewater from onshore aquaculture and potentially other wastewater from other industries. Algae and bivalves naturally eat up ammonia, phosphorus, and other types of compounds. And we can utilize that to not only treat this wastewater, allowing them to recirculate it, but also to potentially generate blue carbon credits. I do not know exactly what time I am at, but if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, or you would like to reach out, I will leave our website in the chat and happy to uh, hear from you at any point. And we're looking forward to being part of this accelerator. No doubt about that. Thank you. That's great, Nicholas. Please do, if you haven't applied, make sure you get your application in. Um, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Ali. And then just so you know, Mike Palmer, you will be next right after Ali. Okay. The floor is um, yours, Ali. Yes, thank okay. you for giving this opportunity and uh, thank you for the CTO. Uh, actually, uh, I am, my background is the electrical engineering. I'm research senior, uh, uh, senior research associate at the University of Toronto. Actually, I was and I'm working on my company. The product that I developed based on my experience that I gained during my past uh, research and uh, energy uh, system. And the point is that my product at, is uh, applicable at the residential homes. So in, in, in the near future, all homes should be able to be fed from multiple energy resources. So recently you may have power wall at your home. So maybe backup generator and electric vehicle to home. So all of these solutions has a problem getting connected to the home. For example, power wall needs gateway and to be connected to the distribution system at home and also additional devices to cut down the load that is not necessary. The same applicable for the generac that needs another devices that we get connected to the home and another hardware that shed the load that is not necessary. And electric vehicle connected to the home is the same. But if you would like have all of them at the same time, it's not possible with the current technology. They are because they are not talking to each other. They are not capable to be connected and integrated at once. So my technology that I we developed here is replaces the, all these interfaces and all of the power wall, battery storage, electric vehicle, backup generator directly connected to this system without additional interfaces and with the power management that can manage of these all power uh, energy resources can decide that at what at, at any moment which sources utility backup generator power wall or electric vehicle should be connected to the home for the comfort of the customer and the first and the, for the sake of the cost reduction we got three patents one patent from canadian two us patent and a Working uh, prototype uh, what functioning is on the pilot uh, house uh, for, for two years, three years. And we are looking for the business. We are, in terms of technology, I believe we are well developed our, our, our concept, but we are looking uh, a mentorship for the developing our business model and getting customer and customer discovery and also uh, funding for expand our that product in the commercialization level. We can Thank help you. you with that, Ali. Thank you so sure. much. Thank you. I'm going to turn the floor over to Mike Palmer. Sadamed, you will be next on deck. Mike, it's all yours. Hi, I'm Mike Palmer. I'm the executive vice president of Water Rotor Energy Technologies, which is a pre-revenue startup in Ottawa that specializes in developing hydrokinetic technology mm -hmm. to convert the energy in slow moving ocean currents and rivers 
into electricity. Uh, we're currently uh, have developed uh, several systems and proven them, and we're on the drawing board with a major uh, system for the Gulf Stream, which uh, we're raising money for a uh, uh, $15 million uh, Series A Did I lose you or did you just wrap it up? Various parts of the world. Okay. Excellent, Mike. I'm Thank sorry you. if I talked over you for a second. Uh, that's all right. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. You were super succinct. Um, and I can't wait to meet, read more about it. Uh, Sa Ahmed, you are up next. And let me just look and see. I think. Um, all right, I have, if there's anybody else who wants to pitch, please let me know. The floor is yours. Hi, my name is Saad Ahmed and I'm here from tiny Toronto. We've been working on building backyard homes uh, where you can put a garden suite legally, but here I'm today talking about double laminated timber. And if you can see this uh, product in my hand, these are two by fours that have been doweled together with wood. And this is a hundred percent glue-free, structurally bearing wall. So this is the material I intend on building the tiny homes for seniors in their gardens with. And there's lots of ability to profile these things into uh, interior walls. So this could be like a ceiling component, and this has many acoustic and health benefits. Um, where we are at this stage is that uh, we have found manufacturers in Europe. There's custom uh, producers of lumber in North America that are interested in the product creation here. And if you have heard a lot about the mass timber industry with the tall buildings coming, this is more along the lines of using the same material, but for lower rise buildings uh, from one, two, three, up to six stories. Well done. And I love the show and tell. Thank you so much. I believe our last pitch will come from Miriam. Hi everyone, it's nice to meet you. I'm Miriam, also from Toronto, Ontario, and uh, we're Pulsenix. What we're developing are capabilities to diagnose uh, sources of energy inefficiencies for clean energy processes. So these are processes that are mandated by policies around the world to more than quadruple within less than 10 years, but they're extremely energy intensive. So even if we use renewable energy to power these systems, there's still going to be a fight for, uh, for demand. Um, and so this is, this is what we're doing and uh, excited to be here. We are thrilled that you're here. Beth, this is a really energetic group. I'm gonna pass the floor back to you. I think we have got everybody who wanted to pitch. Great, thank you very much, Skelly. And I'm going to turn it over to um, Hanif. So Hanif Montazeri um, has joined us a little bit late. Um, and I want to give you two, two minutes to, to speak up and, uh, and then we'll have maybe uh, five minutes to, for Q&A at the end. So take it away, Hanif. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, sorry for being delayed. Uh, I just um, I had a, a prior meeting. So I just uh, want to um, um, basically share my experience with that. So, you know, I've been uh, part of the uh, Clean Tech Open uh, a few years ago and uh, all our technology. We are based in Toronto. Uh, we are expanding to San Diego recently. And uh, or in, in our company, what we do, we, uh, we uh, invented a new technology that converts heat to cooling using nanoporous materials. And um, since uh, we joined the Clean Tech Open, uh, the company has kind of matured up significantly. And uh, as of now, we are installing uh, a tri-generation system, solar tri-generation system. And the way our technology, basically, the, the way what we offer to our customers is that we install hybrid solar panels that produces electricity and hot water uh, for the customer. And uh, electricity gets consumed by customer just like uh, any solar panel. But the hot, uh, hot water that gets is a byproduct of producing electricity by uh, solar panel. We convert that hot Hot, hot water during summer months into cooling directly using nanoporous materials. And in the, uh, in the winter months, we use bypass the hot water for uh, basically warming up the building. So consumer get kind of 100% roughly 
uh, more than 90% of the solar energy, uh, harvest 90% of the solar energy in the form of electricity, heating or cooling. And um, there's a more than 70% uh, reduction in energy bills. Um, I, I leave it there, yeah, Beth, um, in case there isn't a question, but uh, I can't say anything. Uh, I mean, it was a fantastic opportunity being participating in this uh, group and uh, we got exposed to so many networks, uh, we, we got to know so many people and uh, all the kind of networking uh, and connection that we made here was, was uh, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Hanif, and congratulations on the progress of, uh, of Inersion. Love to hear it. Um, so I have, I think, two more slides, which essentially are um, slides to tell you how to find us um, as you um, move ahead. And so we have just one moment, please, while I just turn on my, um, my screen again. I want to make sure you all have the URLs that you need in order to apply and in order to learn more. So quite a few people have put um, links in the chat if you want to connect with anyone. Um, but this is a very good link to check out. So bit.ly slash CTOMK2022 is our Northeast Media Kit. There's a lot of information in there. There are brochures. There's information on other events that we're holding between now and the, um, and the application deadline. There's information on prizes and much more. Um, don't forget to apply by April 17th at cleantechopen.org. You can check it out. Let any of us know if you have any questions at all. And um, I want to thank you all for, uh, for coming. But before we close, I do want to um, maybe we can turn off the recording and see if anyone has any questions. So are there any questions that came in from the chat? <laughs> 